In this video I'm going to talk about uh, looking at data in terms of it being considered quote unquote normally distributed. Uh, let's look, uh, before I even get to that, let's look at the idea of what types of uh, maybe uh, various types of distributions that you would see. Just the most generic ones, of course. So uh, a normal distribution, most of the day, like here's the mean uh, value. So most of it sort of flows around the mean in, you know, a pretty even fashion, even though that doesn't look like the greatest job ever. So if I delete, if I sort of erase this around. So most of the data tends to fall within the mean pretty close. The further you get away from the mean in terms of standard deviations away, it the number of data points significantly fall. Uh, the other options that you could have, I mean there's a bunch of them, but most likely, uh, you could deal with a distribution that's sort of uh, skewed positively. So or sorry, skewed negatively. And it's because the mean would seem to go here, but you've got these negatives that flow out, so that makes it a negatively skewed uh, data set. Or, you, of course, you could have the opposite of that, where you end up with sort of a skew to the positive. So this is positively skewed data, which means that there's a few points that are uh, really positive that are sort of pulling up the overall set. Now, but what we're talking about is normal distribution. The thing about normal distribution is it's used in uh, a variety of cases, one of them being IQ. Uh, we also tend to look at uh, it really any metrics tends to a lot of metrics tend to fall there height and you know weight and that whole thing but uh, what we want to look at here is just what percentage is falling that's the nice thing about normal distribution I can get an analysis of what percentages of the uh, data fall into each one of these groups now at the bottom you'll see uh, they use this term for uh, this little symbol for the mean value but I'm going to change it to this that's the mean value in the middle. So most of the data tends to fall uh, generally there. This would be one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and even three standard deviations below. On the other end you'll have one, two, and three standard deviations above. Now uh, for each section, one standard deviation below and one standard deviation above the uh, normal distribution, uh, this is called the uh, normal distribution curve, it'll be something like 34% of the data will fall in each one of these segments. So the percentage of data between one standard deviation and below to one standard deviation above is 68 percent or so of the data, which is a lot. So a lot of it falls with one standard deviation away. Um, by the way, the, for IQ, for instance, uh, my mean value would be 100, of course, that's how it's set up, with a standard deviation of about 15. So if we were going to do an IQ analysis here, we'd say 100 is the IQ at this point. Uh, this is about 85. This is an IQ of 115. Two up would be 130. And then three standard deviations above the mean, you're looking at something like 145. Each one of these... Um, to school officials and you know other people who are in uh, intellectual analysis and that sort of thing. Each one of these numbers tends to stand for something uh, of importance. In fact, we identify uh, intellectual or cognitive disabilities at that 70 uh, IQ and below tends to be two. That's why they pick that number because it's two standard deviations below. A lot of um, gifted programming starts somewhere around 120, so it's somewhere between uh, 115 and 130, depending on the state. I mean, that's just where people tend to qualify for those those sorts of things. Anyway, moving forward, uh, let's look at how much is between, uh, what percentage of the data falls between 85 and 70. Well, as you can see, like these sets, that's a lot of data. 
that's going on. Whereas here, not as much, because the 70 is a lot less data uh, than would fall in, in terms of a percentage, than would fall between the uh, uh, at 85. So what we're looking at here is a number somewhere around 13 and a half percent on each one of those sections. So if I was going to go back to my analysis of um, how much data falls where, if I wanted to know from two standard deviations below the mean to two standard deviations above the mean, in that case I want to add 13.5 plus 34 plus 34 plus 13.5 because all those sections are covered. It's easy to fall for the idea that you just add the 13.5s together, but that's uh, you also have to consider that the 34s are there. And this number ends up being something around 95%. So it's really common to see these figures sort of uh, pl uh, made known to people. So we can say that two standard deviations above or below the mean, you're looking at 95% of all the data. So in an IQ sense, that means that all IQ, or 95% of IQs fall somewhere uh, 70 and above, all the way up to 130 and below. That's kind of where that number is. Now, the different, the percentage of data that falls between two and three standard deviations is even significantly smaller than it is between one and two. At that point, you're looking at something around two point I'm going to try to get a different color so it's relatively obvious that where I'm going with it. So uh, the difference here would be 2 0.35 percent. That's just between here and here. So 2.35 percent here as well. So to get the different the distance between three standard deviations below and three standard deviations above, you're looking at adding uh, the 68 that we had before, uh, the 13.5 twice would be 27, and then you want to add uh, 2.35 plus 2.35. So ninety nine point seven percent of all data falls within three uh, per, uh, three standard deviations above or below the mean value in a normal distribution so you can really start to get uh, the idea of you know how closely packed the data is in terms of what huge percentages it would be for one standard deviation out if I were to sort of chart it I guess I would say uh, this two and three so that's a lot so what does it all mean um, really the big issue is that you need to consider uh, how much data it is uh, recognized up to a certain point. Like if I wanted to know what percentage falls below uh, three standard deviations below the mean. So less than, so x values less than three standard deviations below. So what I need to do is take all of the data that's above that number and just subtract it. Well I know that uh, all the data that falls between here and here would be uh, 99.7. So I'm going to take 100% and I'm going to subtract 99.7% and I'm going to end up with 
or sorry, 99.7, I need to hit the percent, I'm going to end up with 0 0.3. Now, that's the distance of all numbers that are outside three standard deviations. So I need to break it into two parts because I just want less than. So I divide by 2 and end up with 0 0.15. So something like 0.15% uh, of all data falls below three standard deviations. And sometimes you have to do, uh, you know, I want to know how much is above uh, two standard deviations below. So there's a, you know, there's a couple ways I could do it. I could add, uh, at this point, by the way, you're looking at 50% over here and 50% over here. So what might be advantageous to do, if I was looking for uh, two below, would just be to take 50% which would be all of this on the positive side, and then add 34% and then 13.5%. So if I wanted to know how much data was above uh, two standard deviations below the mean, all I would do is add 34 plus 50 plus 13.5 and find out that 97.5% of all data is there. So be careful about what the question asks you. If it's asking you about a subset that's less than something, you need to probably do, uh, you might have to do division because they're broken up into groups uh, represented in that way. If they want to know just a little bit more than half, remember that it's easier just to break it at the mean and do 50% above uh, just to make the calculations a little bit easier. So that's normal distribution uh, set up in a way that I hope is useful to you. It's probably a good idea to have some chart somewhere with the uh, percentages because sometimes it's a little difficult to remember them all. And there's a little bit of a the 68% thing. There's a, sometimes you'll see it at like the 67 range, but just adjust for uh, your needs specifically.